Today on Personal Injury Court. We were covering the entire sidewalk. So you all wanted somebody to walk into this plastic, not seeing it, and everybody laughs about it. I was riding along in my scooter. I came crashing into this huge plastic barrier, and it flung me back, and I landed violently on my back. You're asking this court to award you $300,000. People are covered with plastic wrap. They're confused. They don't know what happened. It's, it's innocent and it's harmless. Whether it's your fault or not, your prank changed someone's life. Do you see that? Judge Gino Brogdon spent 10 years on the bench ruling on cases worth billions of dollars. Now he presides over some of the largest claims in TV history. This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Walsh versus Montgomery and Waters. Ms. Walsh, it's my understanding from the documents that you filed with this court that you are suing for injuries that you sustained in a prank gone wrong. You're asking this court to award you $50,000 for medical expenses, $25,000 for future medical expenses, $225,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $300,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Montgomery, Mr. Waters, you all believe that this is not your fault. This is all the plaintiff's fault because she was not where she should have been. True? That's correct, Your all Honor. All right, well, let's get into the legal sauce. Ms. Walsh, how does someone like you end up in a prank? I uh, ride a scooter to work and home every day. I have a successful flower shop in town, and I enjoy making people smile with my flowers and my creations. Um, I do live in a college town. It's a party <laughs> town, sir. And um, they do get a little carried away and out of control from time to time, and that's why I'm here. So, Mr. Montgomery, Mr. Waters, uh, you guys are pranksters, huh? On occasion, we'll pull a prank here and there. Well, what kind of pranks have you pulled? We've done all types of stuff, sir. We've uh, TP'd different fraternities. We've had egg throwing competitions between the fraternities. Uh, even recently, there was something where we took toilets and put it in the front yard of a rival frat. We, yeah, we did, we did. <laughs> you guys yeah. kind of go all the way. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, okay. It's pretty fun. Um, and we're sophomores at Hickman College. Uh, we well, I've heard Hickman can be kind of wild. <laughs> it is It is one of the top party schools in the country, but don't worry, we're getting a great education there. We're learning a good lot. Good to hear. Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. Have some fun, but get your grades. We are, That's we are getting the grades, Your Honor. And we were looking forward to Spirit Week. It's known as Prank Week. Mm -hmm. What's, yeah. what's the yes, week Your Honor, like? So it's a, it's a week hosted by the fraternities and sororities to help network students. Okay. Um, we go and have parties, networking events, and also the elaborate harmless pranks to help bring a community to the school. Yes, sir. So, Ms. Walsh, how did you get hurt in a prank? I was riding along on my scooter, minding my own business through the frat neighborhood like I do every time, and all of a sudden, I came crashing into this huge plastic barrier. I just slammed into it. It totally slowed me to almost a stop, and then it flung me back like a slingshot, and I landed violently on my back, and I laid there in a heap for a moment and just tried to compose myself. So you're riding along on your scooter, and out of the blue, you hit a plastic wall. Yes. Your scooter goes flying, you hit the pavement. Yes, Your Honor. I couldn't see it, it was invisible. And I laid there for a moment, and the gentleman over here, they came over and they were helping me up. And um, they told me they were doing a prank, that they had set up a plastic wrap trying to catch one of their fellow frat rivalries. Okay. Well, they caught me instead. And I was in a lot of emotional shock at the time. And they asked me if I was okay, and they apologized. And I said, you know, yeah, I'm okay. I just want to go home. Yes, and like a month later, I was working and the pain was so excruciating, I could not work anymore. Ooh. I went to the doctor. The doctor told me I had a herniated disc. Oh. And the pain just kept getting worse and worse. I can't get any work done. Oh. I've lost major clients because of this, because yes, I can't do, fulfill their orders anymore. And so this is actually destroying my business. Yes, ma'am. I'm in fear that I'm gonna lose my shop completely, and it's taken an emotional toll on my life, yes, and it's all their fault. This is all their fault, Your Honor. Mr. Montgomery, Mr. Waters, y'all talk to me. What's this plastic wrap deal? It involves a clear plastic wrap 
that we take and we wrap around a, a doorway or a Two walkway. Points. Okay, this is out in the public. Where did you wrap the plastic yes, wrap? Yes, sir. So typically it's done at night uh, because it's a clear plastic, but you can still see it. And so you want to have low visibility so you get that surprise factor. We decided to take it up a notch and do it outside. We thought, let's do it a little bigger this time. Yeah. So we stretched it from a tree located in front of the house mm -hmm. all the way out to a stop sign located by a curb in front of the house. So we were, we were covering the entire sidewalk on one side. So you all wanted somebody to, to walk into this plastic, not seeing it, and uh, then ha ha ha, yes, and, and everybody laughs about it. Usually it's funny, it's, people are covered with plastic wrap, they're confused, they don't know what happened, and they're trying to get it off frantically, so, but it's, it's innocent and it's harmless. Mm -hmm. So that night, actually, we were setting up and we had a few people come by, and they actually ran into it, but they just laughed and shook their heads. They Everybody right around it. They, they saw it and they, they went around it. And this is not the first time we've done this at the college. So this, this is something that people understand is prank week and they just mind their business and continue about their day. So we had just finished setting it up when all of a sudden she came speeding down the sidewalk on her scooter and ran right into it. So we ran over to help her to see if she was okay. Mm -hmm. And she got up and she was absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. We I'll, talked to her for a little bit. Yeah. We, we did talk to her. So she gets knocked off the scooter and she's fine. She was a little flustered, but she spoke with us. She was, she was calm. Once, once we explained to her what had happened, mm -hmm. she didn't seem like she was in pain. She didn't say that she was in pain or anything. Coming up. I was proceeding down the sidewalk on my scooter and I came up on the sidewalk and bam, just wham, I ran into that plastic wrap and just flung me back like a slingshot. I scolded him. I told him it was stupid prank. Someone was going to get hurt. She was fine. She took a selfie with us. Yeah, we actually ended up yeah. laughing and just talking for a few minutes. Miss Walsh, you took a selfie. You're, I mean, how bad could this have been if you took a selfie? I was riding along on my scooter. I came crashing into this huge plastic barrier, and it flung me back, and I landed violently on my back. She was calm. Mm -hmm. She didn't say that she was in pain or anything. Miss Walsh, you submitted to this court an exhibit. Yes, Your I want you to cross over to the monitor and show me how this happened. Take your time. I was proceeding down the sidewalk on my scooter, and I came up on the sidewalk and came all the way up, and bam, just wham, I ran into that plastic wrap right there, and it threw me back violently onto my back. So when you hit that plastic wrap, your scooter kept going, and the plastic threw you back onto the sidewalk. It kind of flipped out under it. It hit my face and just flung me back like a slingshot. So these gentlemen come over and help you up. They did. They were very nice. They helped me get up on my feet. They were apologetic. I scolded them. I told them it was stupid prank, that they shouldn't have done this, that someone was going to get hurt. Scooter or no scooter, someone was going to get hurt with us. Thank you, ma'am. You may return to the podium. Yes, sir. Your Honor, when she fell over and we ran up to, to help her, we did ask if she was all right. And we checked. We checked. We, we did check. We, we said, we, are you all right? Mm -hmm. She was OK. She got up. She was fine. She took, a, she took a selfie with us. Yeah, we actually ended up yeah. laughing and just talking for a few minutes. And well, then you all submitted that selfie to the court. We're going to we pull did. it up we here did. on the yes, plasma sir. screen. Uh, now, Miss Walsh, you took a selfie. Your Honor, I mean, how I bad could this have been if you took a selfie? I don't She was fine. That. That's you, she right? She was fine. That's her. I, I was in shock. I don't remember that. We got to live with what we do. That's you on the selfie, right? Yes. You don't look hurt there to me. So you take the selfie, you get back on your scooter, and you go on your way. Yes, sir. Somebody being knocked off a scooter, I imagine people get hurt when you've done this before, right? Uh, no, Your Honor. We've actually had no incidents of injury, complaints from the student body or the, the neighbors, the locals in the area. So you submitted a video of some of your prior pranks? Uh, no, of this specific prank that we've done in years past. Okay, let's That's take right. a peek at it. But this is inside, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> that's not funny. Okay, so, th that's so it, the way that's causes, supposed to happen. Yes, sir. So it causes it's an innocent prank. Quite it's a surprise, but it's, it doesn't hurt. Next, guys, do you see that the prank has gone wrong? Your Honor, 
I'm sorry, but does it not sound a little fishy? She didn't feel the pain for a month? This court has consulted orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Karen Flood. Well, if it doesn't resolve on its own, we actually wind up doing surgery. This prank was not designed for people riding scooters. It was made for walkers and joggers. Your Honor, there's actually a city ordinance saying that there should be no vehicle. I almost got hit by right a there. car. This is the city of Hickman rules. Do not ride on the sidewalk. Miss Walsh, you knew what the rules were, right? I was proceeding down the sidewalk on my scooter, and I came up on the sidewalk, and bam, just wham, I ran into that plastic wrap and just flung me back like a slingshot. She was OK. She got up. She was fine. She took a selfie with us. Yeah, we actually ended up yeah. laughing and just talking for a few minutes. You don't look hurt there to me. So, Miss Walsh, when did you realize that you were hurt? It was about a month later, and I went to the doctor, and the doctor told me I had a herniated disc, and I can't lift anything heavy. I have to stay out of work for several months. It could take almost a year for this process to heal. Well, I saw some of the photos that you submitted to the court. Some of those pots might be tough for Sheriff Matt to lift once you fill them with soil and the plants, right? They are extremely heavy. Part of your job's been hampered here. It is my whole livelihood. I saw when you walked over to the plasma screen, you've, you've still got a back brace on. Your back is still bothering you. It affects even my legs down to my feet. You've submitted to this court, uh, it looks like two decks of cards of medical expenses. You're asking this court to award you just for past $50,000. Yes, Your Honor. You've been through a lot. I see you're asking for $25,000 for future medical expenses, so your journey's not over. Yes, Your Honor. Guys, do you see that the prank has gone wrong? Your Honor, I'm sorry, but does it not sound a little fishy? She didn't feel the pain for a month? That seems a little strange to me. That seems a little strange to me. I did feel it. I did feel a slight pain. The delay in time itself doesn't indicate what the nature of the injury is. Sometimes people don't feel it right away. People can be badly injured and figure it out two, three, four, five days or weeks later. To better understand the nature of your injuries, this court has consulted orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Karen Flood. Sheriff Matt, will you get Dr. Flood? Yes, Your Honor. Hello, Dr. Flood. Hello, Your Honor. Thank you for joining us. Yes. Can you please explain the nature of Ms. Walsh's injuries? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Walsh herniated a disc uh, in her lower back and her lumbar spine. And when that happens, the disc material actually pushes out and creates pressure on the nerves that go down the legs. You can see it here in the MRI, the disc material pressing into the, into the nerve roots. When that happens, that can lead to some excruciating pain going down those nerves. It can also give you some numbness and tingling, potentially some weakness in your lower extremities. Well, how do you repair it, doctor? Well, if it doesn't resolve on its own, we actually wind up doing surgery. And I have brought a video with me to show that, to explain things a little okay. bit more. So again, here's the disc material pressing out onto those nerves. You can see the angry disc. There's also a little bit of arthritis here in the back that can also create some pressure. So to fix that, we're going to clean out everything that's creating pressure on the nerves. We're going to take out a little bit of bone, and then we're going to restabilize the spine, because once you remove the bone, the spine is no longer stable. We'll do that by putting screws in at each level, some little cages in between the levels in order to, to maintain the spacing, connect it all with rods and then put in some bone graft. Well, what's the recovery like, Doc? If you're talking about really heavy lifting like big flower pots, it could be a good nine to 12 months before you're even trying to do that. Thank you, Doctor. We appreciate you. You are relieved. Thank you. Mr. Montgomery, Mr. Waters, whether it's your fault or not, your prank changed someone's life. Do you see that? Your Honor, we, we see that she's hurt and we're sorry for that, but this is not, not our fault. This is not our fault. Is Why fault. is this she, not your fault? She was riding on the sidewalk. It's public property. This prank was not designed for people riding scooters. It was made for walkers and joggers. Your Honor, there's actually a city ordinance saying that there should be no vehicle. I almost got hit by right a there. car. That's that. from do the not, city. All right. Do from not city. ride on the sidewalk. We're going to have order in this court. Y'all can't talk at the same time. Yes, sir. Now. This is the city of Hickman rules. Do not ride on the sidewalk. Ride only where bikes are allowed or in the bike lanes. 
Pay attention to where you're going. Miss Walsh, you knew what the rules were, right? Your Honor, I almost got hit by a car. It cut me off and making a quick turn to the right, and it scared me. So I felt it was safer. I was almost home. It was only a couple blocks on the sidewalk that I had to go, and that was it. Even the animation that you submitted to this court shows you on the sidewalk where you should not have been. Yes, Your Honor. I had no other choice. Folks, I think I've heard what I need to hear. I'm ready to render my decision. The verdict is in. These defendants put plastic across the sidewalk. You're on your way home on a route you usually take, and you hit this plastic and were badly injured. Gentlemen, you all have put up evidence that this was a prank that was supposed to be funny. You believe that Miss Walsh was in the wrong place at the right time, but it's her fault because she was somewhere she shouldn't have been. I was proceeding down the sidewalk on my scooter, and I came up on the sidewalk, and bam, just wham, I ran into that plastic wrap. There's actually a city ordinance saying that there should be no vehicles. I almost got hit by right a there. car. Right That's from do the not, city. All right. Do from not the city. ride on the sidewalk. We're going to have order in this court. Folks, I think I've heard what I need to hear. I'm ready to render my decision. In every personal injury case, the plaintiff has the burden of proving three things. You've got to prove that the defendants were wrong. That's the first thing. The second thing you have to prove is that they're wrong caused your harm. There's no issue about whether you were harmed and that it was severe and permanent. You've also put up evidence that these defendants put plastic across the sidewalk. You had no way of seeing it. You're on your way home, and the reason you're even on the sidewalk is because the cars made you a little bit uncomfortable. So you got on the sidewalk on a route you usually take, and you hit this plastic and were badly injured. You believe it's their fault and they ought to pay for it. Gentlemen, you all have put up evidence that this was a prank that was supposed to be funny. You did not anticipate that someone would be on a scooter on that sidewalk and run into the plastic. You believe that Miss Walsh was in the wrong place at the right time, but it's her fault because she was somewhere she shouldn't have been. Well, the legal principles that are illuminated by this evidence are as follows. First, the fact that you were trying to be funny does not impact my decision. Intent is not at issue here. Second, when you do a prank, it's a voluntary undertaking, and the law requires that you do it without negligence. Here, the evidence is that you all put up plastic for someone to walk into, and they're not going to see it, and the law holds you responsible if that is not safe. Finally, this case raises the issue of equal responsibility, where the plaintiff is responsible and the defendants are responsible and it's equal, the plaintiff loses at 50%. I find that you have proven equal responsibility, but not on the plaintiff. You gentlemen are equally responsible because both of you participated in setting up this prank. As a result, the law holds you responsible for the result. So. I find in favor of the plaintiff and against the defendants, I'm going to award you everything you've asked for, Ms. Walsh. I'm awarding you $50,000 for your past medical expenses, $25,000 for your future medical expenses, and $225,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $300,000 against the defendants. And you gentlemen each have to pay half of that, $150,000 and $150,000. That's my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. Today on Personal Injury Court. You got a tattoo on your forehead. They were running a contest where the first listener to tattoo the letters K-R-U-D on their forehead would win a $250,000 prize. I'm pretty famous in these parts, mostly for the crazy pranks and antics that we get up to. You're asking this court to award you $510,000. Radio DJ Ricky Smiley. You are known for the best pranks ever. We told the listen that we were gonna drop $100,000 in a helicopter. He's insane! 
Judge Gino Brogdon spent 10 years on the bench ruling on cases worth billions of dollars. Now he presides over some of the largest claims in TV history. This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Bell versus KRUD and Jones. Mr. Bell, it's my understanding from the documents you filed with this court that you are suing KRUD, the radio station, and its DJ for your putting a tattoo on your head. You're asking this court to award you damages of $250,000, future medical of $10,000, pain and suffering of $250,000 for a total award of $510,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Jones and Ms. Young, you are here representing KRUD, right? Yes, Your yes, Honor. Your Honor. It's you all's position that this was a prank. He should know that. This is his fault. He did a stupid thing, and it's not your fault. That's right, That's Your right. Honor. All right, well, let's get into the legal sauce. Uh, how long you been listening to KRUD? Probably, I'd say, about the time that they started airing. Okay. And uh, I love their music. I love their shows. I guess you could also say, up to this point, anyway, I've also been a fan of Crazy Cyrus. So I found out that uh, they were running a contest or promotion, if you will, where the first listener to tattoo the letters K-R-U-D on their forehead would win a $250,000 prize. Now, Your Honor, a little backstory. My, I live with my parents and they are about to lose their house. There was a foreclosure. My father was laid off from his job after 22 years and I saw this as a heaven sent, if you will, opportunity that came at just about the right time for me to help save my parents and my house as well. So you put a tattoo on your forehead to save your parents' house? Yes, sir, that's correct, in short. You are a really good son. Crazy, but definitely a good son. <laughs> Ms. Young, you are here representing KRUD, the radio station, right? That is correct, Your Honor. And Mr. Jones, you are the DJ for KRUD, right? That's right, sir. I'm Cyrus Jones, AKA Crazy Cyrus, as many of, uh, maybe, maybe members here know me as. I'm pretty famous in these parts, mostly for the crazy pranks and antics that we get up to in our station. We actually brought some video evidence of past contests that we run with the station, starting out with bobbing for pig's feet. That's right, hogs hoof, a showdown with, to win free groceries for the year. Uh, next, we've got the battle of the bridegrooms. Uh, you're gonna see some guys in drag. This is a drag race uh, to win a $10,000 wedding ring. And of course, our famous mayonnaise belly flop challenge uh, for $5,000 worth of concert tickets. Obviously, we get up to some crazy stuff at KRUD. Okay, so what happened? I found out about this contest, if you'd like to call it that, from a friend that morning, and naturally I was a little skeptical. So what I did to cover all basis was I called the radio station and I spoke with a gentleman who identified himself as one of Cyrus's crew. Okay. And he did, in fact, confirm that this offer was legit. He also directed me to the contest page on the, on the station's website, and the contest rules explained everything. So it says... Three easy steps to win a fortune. Number one, take our call letters, K-R-U-D. Number two, tattoo them across your forehead, which is what you did. Yes, sir. Be the first listener to do it and win $250,000. Yes, sir. That simple. So as you can imagine, I didn't waste any time. I dashed down to the first tattoo parlor I could find that was near my house, and I asked for a rush job on the tattoo, which, by the way, was not cheap. Uh, it took a couple hours for And you got a tattoo on your forehead. Yes, sir, I did. As soon as they were done, paid them up, dashed down to the radio station, and the people just looked at me. They glared at me in disbelief, almost like they, didn't, they weren't even aware that this was going on. Okay. They started pointing at me and laughing at me. Who, who does that, Your Honor? In a professional setting, who does that? They took out their phones and started taking pictures of me, probably posting it on social media. All right. So eventually, after I was standing there for about 10 minutes, a representative came down from the studio and explained to me that this was, quote unquote, a big misunderstanding. He didn't say a prank. He said a big misunderstanding. Okay. And that there was no prize money to be won for me. Ms. Young, how did you find out that Mr. Bell had come down to the station? Well, I was made aware of it by a staff member. Now, I did not see Mr. Bell. However, I did read an article where it did say a guy with a tattoo on his, on his forehead. And then also I did see some photographs. 
How did you find out, Mr. Jones? Well, I was on air. One of my producers told me while I was on air that Mr. Bell had come into the station with this tattooed on his forehead. I mean, we get up to some crazy stuff, but I could have never imagined in a million years somebody would have actually tattooed our station letters to their forehead. $250,000 is a lot of money. There are a lot of folks that would do that, right? Seriously. How's he to know that this is not real? Your Honor, he clearly did not read the rules. I mean, come on. If he would have went to the webpage, it would have clearly said there was a link on there that said official rules. See the link right there? If he would have clicked on that link, the link would have took him to the page that said April Fools. Now, it, it, did you see that so link? I certainly did not see that, your Honor. I and I have vision problems in both my two eyes. I can't see something that small. Coming up. Ha ha, we got you. April Fools is what he would have seen had That's he clicked he on that link. Absolutely. It was an April Fools joke. We ran radio ads all the way up until April 1st. This court has consulted one of the country's best, Ricky Smiley. We went up in a helicopter. We told the listen that we were going to drop $100,000. Sheriff Department came out. It made national news. I found out that uh, they were running a promotion, if you will, where the first listener to tattoo the letters K-R-U-D on their forehead would win a $250,000 prize. I could have never imagined in a million years somebody would have actually tattooed our station letters to their forehead. So this ha-ha, we got you April Fools from the whole crazy crew at KRUD Radio is what he would have seen had he clicked on that link. Absolutely. You know what? What we've heard today is someone who was rushed and ready to win some money, and he didn't take the necessary steps to protect himself when he could have just followed the link. He heard from a friend about this contest. I see how you spin it that way, but you got to see. You got a good son in a desperate situation trying to save his parents' house. He gets an opportunity to get a quarter of a million dollars because y'all say... Put a tattoo on and come get your money. Do you see how he got there? I understand what you're saying, Your Honor, but he actually entered into an agreement with his mm -hmm. tattoo artist. Mm -hmm. He had to have fill out some sort of um, document that said he was making this decision on his own. How, is that, how no, is that relevant, Your Honor? We how have is that no relevant? agreement with this gentleman to pay him this money in order to p repay him for that Your tattoo. Your Honor, doesn't the law say verbal is binding in advertising? Well, there's a little more to it than that. Okay. Thank you. The law does hold you responsible for the representations that you make publicly. So whether verbal or written, you've got to be very careful about those representations. But why didn't you click on the little link on the bottom? Your Honor, I missed that. It was too small for me to see. So you never saw this second page? Yes, sir, that's correct. I never saw that second page. Mr. Bell, you are asking this court to award you $250,000 for your damages, yes. $10,000 for your future medicals, and $250,000 for pain and suffering. Now, you've told me about how the people reacted at the station when you went down there. What's the general public's reaction when you go around to some place like lunch or take your parents out to dinner or go to work? In short, crud. <laughs> I mean, Your Honor, there's been a laundry list of things how this has horribly negatively impacted my life. I lost my job because of this. My girlfriend broke up with me. My dating life's been a shambles. You know, I wanted to use this money to help save our home. And the biggest thing about it is the tattoo laser removal surgery that I'm going to need to have, yes, the sir. procedures. I can't afford that. And from what I understand, the research that I've done, it may not even be possible to remove all of this without scarring. Next. I was assured by someone at the station at the time that that was legit. We ran radio ads all the way up until April 1st, stating this was our biggest prank yet. Let's listen to that ad. The craziest prank we've ever pulled. Renowned comedian, radio DJ, Ricky Smiley. Well, the radio station here, they approved it according to Miss Young. Yeah, and, uh, you know, they in court. <laughs> <laughs> so you put a tattoo on your forehead to save your parents' house? Yes, sir. That's correct. You are a really good son. Crazy, but definitely a good son. 
he didn't take the necessary steps to protect himself when he could have just followed the link. He heard from a friend about this contest. Mr. Bell, at 5,000 feet, okay, you, you got to wrap your arms around some of the common sense of, do I really get a tattoo on my head for something? This is the day, right? Well, April 1st? Well, one thing that He's said... crazy Cyrus! He doesn't do anything that's sane. He's insane! <laughs> well, I was assured by someone at the station at the time that that was legit, and I've never seen any kind of contests or pranks that involved advertising money to anyone. Your Honor, what he was told by our team member was, this is a legitimate contest that we're running. Go to the website to learn more. And he didn't follow the link. We ran radio ads all the way up until April 1st, stating this was our biggest prank yet. Let's listen to that ad. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming! The craziest prank we've ever pulled is gonna hit you right between the eyes, exclusively here at KRUD. Well, Mr. Bell, did you hear that? If if you're a regular okay. listener, That's right. you would have heard that, right? Well, see, Your Honor, one thing I probably should mention is I work for a telecommunications company. I work the graveyard shift. I just happened to be off that day that it happened, and like I said, I heard from a friend. Yeah, but if they ran it all week, and you are a loyal fan of Crazy Cyrus, why wouldn't you hear at least once? That's a good question. You're Maybe on. they didn't run it as many times as they oh, said they did. Oh, don't start that. Don't well, start Well, unless you have that evidence... No, sir. Don't put that up. It's just more for me to get confused about. Yes, yeah. In order to better understand the relationship between a radio DJ and the listening audience, this court has consulted one of the country's best. Renowned comedian, radio DJ, Ricky Smiley. Sheriff Matt, will you get Mr. Smiley? Yes, sir. You're known all over the country for being a radio personality. Yes, sir. Well, in this case, it's a prank gone wrong. Now, you are known for the best pranks ever. What are some of your best ones? Uh, I was a part of a prank on the Buckwild Morning Show at 95.7, where we went up in a helicopter. We told the listeners that we were going to drop $100,000. And uh, so traffic was bagged up. The sheriff department came out. It made national news. And we were going to throw out, like, $100,000 worth of Monopoly money. <laughs> in this case, Crazy Cyrus Jones... Right. <laughs> he told the listening audience, get a tattoo of the call letters on your head and you get $250,000. Wow. What kind of responsibilities does a radio DJ have to the listening audience with a prank like this? Uh, you have a huge responsibility because it's a liability uh, to the people that own the station, uh, number one. And then uh, we couldn't do anything like that unless it was approved by the general manager and the owner of the radio station. Well, the radio station here, they approved it, according to Miss Young. Yeah, and, uh, you know, they in court. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Smiley, we appreciate you. Yes, thank sir, you thank so you much. Thank you for having me. Your Honor, we do, do feel sorry for this gentleman yeah. who has put tattoo letters on his forehead, but... We have done everything in our power to say this was a joke. You can actually check out our social media right now. Like I said, our fans eat all of this all up. Of us. So your fans, these fans knew it was a prank. Yes, Your Honor. Yeah. We've had those contests. You know what the problem is? Yes. I don't see any of those people with the letters K R U D tattooed on their head. The verdict is in. Mr. Bell, you have put up evidence in this case that the radio station put out an advertisement that you get $250,000 to put the call letters on your head. But you did not click the little link in the corner that would have let you know that this was a prank. You all believe that had he clicked the link, he never would have had a tattoo on his head. This is horribly 
negatively impacted my life. I lost my job because of this. My girlfriend broke up with me. I wanted to use this money to help save our home. The biggest thing about it is the tattoo laser removal surgery that I'm gonna need to have. I can't afford that. Clearly, this was all a misunderstanding. It was an April Fool's joke. Folks, I think I have heard what I need to hear and I am ready to render my decision. In every personal injury case, the plaintiff has to prove three things, that the wrong caused harm. Mr. Bell, you have put up evidence in this case that the radio station and Mr. Jones put out an advertisement that you get $250,000 to put the call letters on your head. Now, you were under some duress in trying to save your parents' home. That is a noble thing, and I understand why you did that. Now, you had certain responsibilities. You called the station to ask someone, is this real? You actually got on the website and saw the advertisement itself. But you did not click the little link in the corner that would have let you know that this was absolutely a prank. You all believe that had he clicked the link, he never would have had a tattoo on his head. And what he did was a stupid thing that you all should not have to pay for. In a fraud case, Mr. Bell has to prove that you all represented something that you knew wasn't true. You knew somebody was likely to rely on it. That person relies on it. And then they're harmed. In the evidence, there are two things that really bug me. The advertisement that has the link that confirms this is a prank, the page that he should have read is the second page, and he'd only find it if he read this small language at the bottom. The second thing is, you all are playing on people who are desperate. We live in desperate times. And the law says if you do a prank, that there's a high likelihood that someone's going to do what you're enticing them to do, they do it and they are harmed. You're bad, but your bill, you must pay for that. And I find against the defendants, and in your favor, I'm going to award $250,000 for your damages, $10,000 for your future medicals, $250,000 for pain and suffering, for a total award of $510,000. Ridiculous. You don't even deserve it. That is my final verdict. You are one man, of our men. That is a grown man, man you're on who Order in this decision. court. He's one of our family. Order in this court. That is my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Gary Martin Hayes has to say. This case did not turn on the traditional wrong caused harm analysis. This one involved a fraud that caused the injury. The radio station advertised an opportunity to win a prize if the contestant did something crazy. They represented something that wasn't true, and Mr. Bell relied on it and was harmed. A safeguard should have been in place to make sure people knew that this was a prank.